The tyranny of the urgent is the rule of the day, and as editors, we know all too well about the pressure of deadlines. Editing is that place between the tools at our disposal and what we do with them. So this week, we're going to go to work and get a leg up on the rat race. We're cutting class. It's not enough to just know the tools of the trade or to be schooled in theory alone. As video editors, we need to be proficient in both in order to make good video. So today, let's start with a little bit of history and then transition over to some basic but practical tools as we put together a project. If we're going to build something, why not a montage? So let's bring in the good old AV cart and let it roll as we get some insight on the subject. Contrary to popular belief, the montage wasn't invented by trigger-happy remote-wielding caffeine junkies. Yes, long before video killed the radio star, in the 1920s, war-torn Soviet filmmakers were developing the editing technique that we know today as the montage. Sergei Eisenstein theorized five different types of montage that were based on the synthesis of individual shots placed in a dialectical relationship. Didn't Einstein have a theory on relativity? Not Einstein, Eisenstein. The Odessa step sequence from his 1925 film, The Battleship Potemkin, is one of the most widely used examples of the montage. The step sequence is a great piece of film history, so check it out if you get the chance. Now, unlike the Hollywood tendency to cut for continuity, the montage works by taking different shots, oftentimes of different subject matters, and places them together in sequence to build new meaning. Today, we're going to tip our hats to those Soviet filmmakers of old by touching on a subject that would be near and dear to their hearts, cubiculus troglodytis, aka the cubicle dwelling worker. Enough with the history lesson. Our purpose today is to talk about the tools. I'm going to use the selection tool to grab a hold of the track for my music bed and drag it into my timeline, butting up the start of my music to the start of the timeline. I'm going to turn on my audio waveforms so we can see the beat and use it as a cue. I want to set markers in my track so I can have some good edit points. I'm going to select my music bed so it's highlighted and then have my timeline play in real time. As the playhead moves along the track, I'm going to tap along with the beat, hitting M on my keyboard. Every time I tap, a marker is placed on my clip. Now if you have to play it through a couple of times to note where the hits are along the waveform as music plays, you can do this too to get a visual cue. And that's important because we're going to use these cues to place our edits. I'm going to go into the bin and select the first clip I want to use in my montage. I'm going to select this one as I feel it helps establish the mood visually and ties in with the music. I'll place the clip into my timeline, aligning it with the start of my music track. I want it to cut out at the first marker I set, so let's shrink it on down. I'll select another clip in my bin, like I did the first, and place it in my timeline. We shrink it down, and notice our action doesn't match the music bed. We want it synced up. I'm going to use the slip tool to slip my edit. The slip tool allows me to change where the in and out points are along my source clip without changing its duration or placement within the timeline. Much better. I have a longer clip here that I want to use, but I want it to be broken into pieces in my timeline. Let's lay it in the sequence and then use the blade tool to cut it up. The blade tool works just like it sounds. It cuts my video right where I click it. Okay, now remember the markers that we set earlier? We're going to make sure that snapping is on for our sequence. The blade tool will automatically align itself with a marker when it's close to it. This makes cutting up the shot real easy. Get real familiar with turning on and off snapping because it can be a great help in your workflow, but it can also be a real pain when you get down to the minutia of frame level edits. Alrighty, let's discard a few of these cuts that we don't need and move on to the next clip. I select it from my bin and roughly judging the gap I'm going to have it fill, uh, we'll uh, trim it to an approximate length. Drop it into the timeline and see it's a bit longer than needed and it's overlapped the clip following it, making the edit point several frames after where we want it. Let's use the roll edit tool. 
It allows us to move or roll an edit point between two clips without changing anything else in the timeline. Part of the montage's power lies in the fact that it's not cut for continuity, so you can take a shot or a series of shots and repeat them to drive a point home. Here's two very different shots back to back. I want to repeat them several times to build up their relationship. I select them and copy them, hit the arrow key until I get to the end of my last clip here. Now I'm going to paste them in. Notice the playhead advances to the end of the newly pasted clips. I can continue to paste in as many instances as I like. Now I can go back and roll my edits to line up with my markers, and then use the slip tool to get the range of frames I want in each shot. All right, after a few more cuts, we're just about done with our montage. We'll add these in and let's watch. me want to rise up against the tyranny of paperwork. Now, aside from silly worker propaganda, the montage is a very powerful technique, and it has a much wider range of use than in sports and martial arts training sequences. Um, but I do have to say the 36th Chamber of Shaolin is pretty darn cool. When it comes to the tools in your edit bay, get to know them, make them second nature, because the less time you have to spend working through your interface is the more time you can spend being creative with your edits. Now, time's about up now because Big Brother's telling us that the bell's about to ring. So uh, we'll see you next time.